Right, so like I mentioned in a video last week, I did sustain a quad injury uh, during my training. Now, I apologize for the clickbait title. This is not some type of disastrous quad tear. This is a minor strain. It's a two to four week setback at worst. Unfortunately, it's the absolute worst possible timing for this type of setback because I do have my meet on September 11th or I plan to do my meet. Uh, the status of that is still up in the air depending on how the quad heals up. Uh, currently, I'm able to do some light leg pressing with no pain, but I still can't squat uh, without pain. So we'll see how that goes. With this video, I'm going to talk about why the strain happened uh, and what, if anything, I could have done to avoid it. And then in the next video, I'll talk about uh, how I'm rehabbing and how I'm recovering as quickly as possible. Now, the first thing that I want to say is that I do not believe this injury had anything to do with poor programming choices, the fact that I was depleted from my bodybuilding show. It really, I, I, I honest to God, think this was independent of anything that happened inside the gym or anything directly related to my training. I have talked many times in the past about how everyone has a set amount of stress that they can handle and how physical and mental stress, even though they feel very different, uh, you know, ultimately the outcome is more or less the same. And that's something that I failed to account for in my training. And I believe that's why I suffered this injury. So let me take a step back and explain that the last three weeks have been some of the most uh, challenging of the past couple of years for me. Uh, fortunately, not for anything that, you know, is terrible or emotional or long lasting. It's just been a really unfortunate leg of the trip that started in Michigan at the end of May and then went to Tampa, Phoenix, and now here to the Pacific Northwest. Everything in Tampa, everything in Phoenix went amazing. And then when it came time to leave for the Pacific Northwest, things started to fall apart. And this was just a series of bad luck, honestly. Um, my flight got canceled leaving Phoenix, so I had to extend my Airbnb stay and uh, push that back another day. Not a big deal. Get into, Fina, uh, get into Portland, find out that my rental car reservation has been canceled. Um, now, if you guys don't know, there's basically a rental car, just car in general shortage right now, um, probably due to the pandemic economy, things like that. So it was not easy to find another car that was affordable. I wasn't able to do that right away. Again, not a huge deal. Take an Uber to the Airbnb. Find out the Airbnb has been double booked. Um, more accurately, the um, person who listed the Airbnb listed the... Um, describe the entire apartment that she owned um, but in reality she was really only renting out a basement that had one bed for for both me and Taylor no kitchen it had a microwave um, but really not a sustainable place to stay uh, you know when you're, you're prepping for meat so uh, literally nowhere to stay in Portland uh, had to find another Airbnb uh, under very short notice very difficult to do ended up in Vancouver Washington about 30 minutes from where we had originally planned to stay uh, and at this point we were between the car, the flights, the Airbnb, already $3,000 over budget for the month. So pretty stressful. Uh, and things did not seem to get better uh, from there. So, um, you know, Taylor had some stuff uh, dealing with friends that, you know, not really relevant, but just some more stresses that we had to deal with. Uh, the rental car ended up getting towed. Um, there was a heat wave in the Pacific Northwest. Uh, it got up to 116 degrees, I believe, or maybe 106. It was very, very hot. The place that we booked, the new place, the new Airbnb, Airbnb was advertised as having air conditioning and did not. So, um, you know, we're two pretty big guys. Staying cool is a very big issue. Completely dehydrated the whole trip, you know, uh, you know, at least the entire week. Trying to drink as much as we could. Um, so all of this goes to say, and I'm not trying to whine or anything. I'm just explaining. Had a lot of external stressors outside of the gym that were weighing on me a lot. And so when I went in for my squat, and despite all this, I'm gonna be, be very clear, despite all this training had been going really, really well. There were a couple minor mishaps that I think are worth noting. So the first time training at Kabuki, uh, I had a deload session planned and working up to 70% squat for triples. Um, I take my last warm up 573 for a triple, absolutely fantastic. Go up to 617 something, this is in sleeves, I can't remember exactly. And the first rep just feels a little bit off. I feel a, a twinge in my knee, nothing bad. Um, had a little bit of residual soreness the next day. Uh, the cause of that, the bar rolled on my back a little bit slightly, caused my knees to shoot forward, stressed the anterior tibialis a little bit. Uh, really nothing nothing big at all. Um, 
that was on Wednesday. On Saturday, I was able to do those heavy front squats, the 455 triple. Again, very, very slight feeling discomfort. Nothing, nothing crazy at all. The following Monday, I was able to do heavy pendulum squats, zero pain, right? So I figured, okay, good to go. Go in Wednesday to, to train and uh, warm-ups feel fantastic. Uh, my last warm-up, 738, moves amazing, exactly how I would want it to, if not better. Uh, and my plan was to take either, uh, take my opener, right? And, or RPE-8, whichever was lighter. RPE-8 that day probably would have been uh, low eights, you know, um, but I decided to play conservative, take the absolute lightest squat opener I, I could possibly do, which was 793 based on my goals. And um, at the bottom, uh, you know, did feel that knee injury uh, very, very bad. I felt like, well, actually I didn't feel it. I heard a ripping sound and decided, in the hole, I was like, not not going to push through this. I'm sure I could have. I think that would have resulted in some type of catastrophic, catastrophic injury. So good decision to bail. But uh, the big thing I want to call out is that before that 793 attempt, I'm sitting there thinking, I don't even want to take this. Like, what's the point? Like, I was that um, mentally stressed that I didn't even want to train. And training generally is one of the most fun and rewarding things in my day. So that, that feeling should have been the sign, hey, back off, even though physically I felt great, all right? I should have known that, hey, I have all these external stresses. Mentally, I'm not in the game. I don't need to force this. Uh, and instead, I, you know, I, I had kind of the meathead mentality, but like, look, shit happens in life. You got to suck it up and you got to move on. And that's not true. Um, you really need to account for these things. And obviously there's a limit. You know, you can't be like, oh, you know, my rental car got towed. I can't squat today. That's a little ridiculous. But when you look at this confluence of um, different stressors, how they're affecting my mental state, um, you know, considering all the travel, all the competition, everything that I had, I should have accounted for those things better. And I failed to do so. So that's, in my opinion, what resulted in the injury. I really, honest to God, believe that my training protocol was perfect. I believe that my diet was exactly where it should have been. Um, so I, I don't attribute this injury to those things at all. I don't think that the the minor knee strain would have been an issue had I not had these other external stresses going on at the time. So moving forward, what can I do about these things? Well, you know, all I can do right now is mitigate the injury as best as possible, rehab it, rehab it as quickly as possible. And then moving forward, I need to remember to kind of take a step back from the emotional connection that I have with competition. Uh, you know, that's something that's plagued me uh, throughout my career. And especially in powerlifting, I do believe that I have some type of um, anxiety or uh, I, I don't even know the right word or what the what the real term would be. But I, I have some type of mental hang up when it comes to powerlifting where I identify too strongly with the sport. You know, um, it's not a reflection of who I am. And as a result of that, I put too much pressure on myself. Um, when it comes time to meet prep. And that's that's been the case for the last couple of years. It's frustrating to me because, you know, you want to think that uh, you can be stronger than any kind of um, mental restrictions uh, that you might have. And that's not always the case. And it wasn't the case for me here. So moving forward, that's what I'm going to try to work on the most. I'm not really concerned about rehabbing the quad. You always have that injury anxiety. Hey, what if it's something really bad? But um, other than some minor swelling and pain, uh, there's no deformity. Um, there's no loss of strength. Uh, there's just tightness and, and pain, uh, tightness and deep soreness. So I'm very, very confident, you know, objectively that it's muscular, uh, that it will resolve itself, uh, you know, with good rehab within two to four weeks and hopefully uh, quickly enough that I can load a little bit of squatting and be able to do that at the meet. But I'm going to play it smart and, uh, you know, see how that goes. So uh, this is not meant to be any sort of um, advice for people, you know, I'm not trying to uh, encourage you what to do or what not to do with your own training or your own injuries. Um, but I do hope that it's helpful to people who might be going through mental stresses and might be concerned about how that's impacting your training. All right. It is okay to pull back. And on honestly, many times it's smarter to pull back. So if you have comments or questions for me, uh, please do let me know. Uh, I would love to help out answer it as, as best as I can. Uh, hopefully you found the videos entertaining at least or exciting. And, um, yeah, moving forward, I am really going to make a, a concerted effort to be better about the YouTube videos. I do think that I can have more interaction with the community and deliver better content through this platform. So I really appreciate you watching. And if you'd like, share, subscribe, all that regular stuff, I would appreciate that as well. Till next time, keep on training hard, thinking strong.